In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We a warm welcome to our Sunday worship today. Even though virtual, we welcome you. And please tune in from wherever you are um, and join us in our worship on this cold Sunday morning. We thank God for his grace, and we thank God that we are here to worship him another Sunday and to give him thanks and praise. Today we have Reverend Obi, who will be bringing us the message today. And the theme for today is Jesus invites us to come to him. We have our reading, two readings. The Old Testament reading will be read by Evangelist John. And the New Testament reading will be read by Chichi. So we, we begin by with sing, the singing of our first hymn, 432, Rejoice, the Lord is King. And Stephanie and John will sing for us today. Thank you, Stephanie and John. It's always a pleasure to hear you sing for us. Brothers and sisters, we are sinful people. We sin against our brothers and our sisters in our actions, in our deeds, and in, what, in our thinking. So let us come before God and confess our sins to him. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your, our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all your goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our special prayer for today, the Collect. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonders of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come to the time for our readings, and the Old Testament reading will be read by Evangelist John, followed by the New Testament reading, be read by Chichi. Our Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 14, reading from verse 17 to 20. After his return from the defeat of Kedolaoma and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shave, that is the king's valley. And King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high. He blessed him and said, blessed be Abram by God most high, maker of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abraham gave him one tenth of everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from Revelation chapter 19, verse 6 to 10. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters, and like the sign sound of mighty thunder peals crying out hallelujah for the lord our god the almighty reigns let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready to her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen bright and pure for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints and the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb. And he said to me, these are true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your comrades who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Titi, for the readings. John and Stephanie will sing for us again, hymn number 106, Dear Lord and Father of all mankind. And this will be followed by this gospel reading and sermon, who we, and Reverend Obi will bring that to you. Praise. Oh. 
Sabbath rest by Galilee, O calm of hills above, where Jesus knelt to share with thee the silence of eternity, interpreted by love, interpreted by love. Breathe through the hearts of all desire, thy coolness and thy balm. Let sense by down, let flesh retire, speak through the earthquake, wind and fire, O still small voice of calm, O still small voice of calm. Um, to viewers at home and the rest of you, please stand if able. Our gospel reading is taken from the book of John, chapter 2, reading from verse 1 to 11. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. The wedding at Cana. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw, out some. Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So, so they took it. When the steward tasted the water, that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The stewards called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first, sign of his, um, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Thank you. For this sermon, may I speak in the name of our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Taking a walk on a quiet day. Some of us might feel that we only exist in this world, and when our life is over, that is the end. On the other hand, some people might feel that we work together on this planet to look after ourselves. But then again, there might be something or someone that is looking after the whole universe, and there might be a connection with us as part of creation. Our Bible reading helps us to understand this a bit more, especially in the reading of when Jesus attended the wedding at Cana. Weddings among the Jewish people were considered to be an occasion of high importance. Our reading shows that Jesus and his disciples attended the wedding, and his mother Mary had also attended the wedding as well. Therefore, Mary did not come with Jesus and his disciples. When they had run out of wine, Mary had called unto Jesus for a solution. And Jesus' response to her was, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not come. 
But then there is a gap we can fill in the reading. And Mary tells his servant, do whatever he tells you. Mary and Jesus may have come as important guests. And Mary, in her concern, expresses her, her feelings for humanity. It is quite common as human beings to act as on behalf of others, especially when there is a cause for concerns, regardless of our status. And in our reading in Genesis, we see this, for example, when Abraham, Abraham as a leader, um, inter um, interceded to rescue his nephew and the family and all the people that were captured out of Sodom. He brought them back and Abram was blessed by Melchizedek in the Valley of the key, um, Kings. In our time, we have seen recently that in Russia, many people have protested against the government on how the opposition leader has been treated. They were not politicians, they were just ordinary citizens like you and I. So these are, these, these are examples of how we know that people do get involved in situations like Mary. When or where have you felt the need to intervene in situations that primarily may not be down to you to resolve the problems? Mary telling Jesus' servants, do whatever he tells you, indicates that there are circumstances about Jesus' life that Mary has observed from the time he was developing and she had treasured those circumstances in her life. For example, the book, um, the book of Luke reminds us that the shepherds came to visit Mary and Joseph in Bethlehem when Jesus was born, and they told her things about Jesus in addition to giving and um, presenting gifts for Jesus. And Mary treasured those things that they told her. Also, during the Passover in Jerusalem, when Jesus Christ was 12 years old, and um, he um, went with Mary and, Jesus, and Joseph and their relatives, at one point, they were looking for Jesus, and when they found him in the temple, his response to them was, why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? So we can understand the things that Mary has treasured in her heart, and we can also understand why, we, why Mary came to Jesus for intervention, even if his time has not yet come. But Jesus ended up obeying her because she was his mother. So he obeyed her by ordering and um, turning the water into wine. On one hand, Jesus Christ says that his hour has not come. On the other hand, he assigns the task to his disciples, telling them to fill the jars with water, draw out some water, and give it to the steward and the disciples obeyed him. This shows that Jesus Christ was bringing out his authority. The steward of the feast did not know where the wine came from, but he acknowledged that it was the best. His mind was preoccupied with the traditions of serving all the good wine first before serving the inferior wine afterwards. He was so preoccupied with that, that he did not ask the disciples where this wine came from. With so many guests and his sense of reasoning, it's obvious that he could not recognize who Jesus Christ was in the, at the wedding. Jesus meets us in different ways. Sometimes he meets us directly, and sometimes he can use other people to come to us. And when Jesus comes to us, there is a transformation that occurs. Some people realize this in time, and to some people, this takes time. And when they do, it becomes a life-changing experience for them. Concerning the disciples, 
They didn't work as the master had told them. Therefore, transformation could not have happened if they were disobedient to Jesus to serve the drink. But then again, Jesus can do it without them. The obedience of the disciples to Jesus is like seeing pine boards on the floor and together following the instructions that came with the pine boards and setting it up to achieve a, um, a chest drawer as needed. This discovery of wine would have pleased the disciples, but they never took credit for it because Jesus Christ was the leader and they believed in him in his actions. Today, Jesus Christ is inviting us to his wedding, a wedding whereby he sees the church as his bride. He has laid down his life for us for our salvation. As a result to Christians, he is the savior of the world. He is the perfect spiritual wine and he is in our midst. As a church, his bride, we recognize him by the power of his spirit. Nevertheless, there are moments when things can be challenging for people, even as Christians, when it comes to experiencing Jesus in the midst. Globally in the past, people could socially meet in large numbers, chat and hug. Sadly, in the last one year, most of this has ceased due to the, um, in, most of it has ceased in the natural form due to COVID-19 disease, and this can be distressing. There are bereavement due to losses, long-term health problems for some of the survivors, cancellation of appointments, economic problems, and mental health breakdowns. This can really get people down. Yet in all this, we Christians, for example, look onto the bright side and try to be there for ourselves, for the body of Christ as a church, and also for others. Unlike the stewards who try to make entertainment with inferior wine, and then it eventually runs out, Christians recognize that Jesus is in the midst. He's that perfect living wine and it ne he never runs out, a wine that never runs out. And he is, according to Christian, the best that God gives us. He's not just there in favorable times. He's also there when times are challenging. So as a result of this, we can cast all our anxieties and fears to, on him. Like the disciples who followed his direction, Jesus can help us to come together and come and create solutions to our problems until this virus ceases. We can look into the vaccines to physically protect us, and we can meet in worship through the means of technology to feed our souls with the love and knowledge of God, or even use books. We can also assist others as far as is practically possible. To the bereaved, know this, that Jesus is Lord of heaven, earth, and below. And to those Christians that has, have faithfully departed, they have only gone home ahead of us till we meet again with him and uh, we, till we meet again and with him, Jesus. In this season of epiphany, let us keep our heads up and also hold on to one another looking up to him in spirit and praying for his intercession of our lives. For he is our savior until he comes and takes us with him together with the saints in heaven. So Lord, we thank you that as a church, you see us as your bride. Help us to walk together by the power of your Holy Spirit so that others may get to know you like we do and be received into God's kingdom. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Reverend Obi, for your message of obedience. Christ was obedient to his mom, and so we, Christ asked us to be obedient to him. And if we are truly obedient, then we will follow him and listen to his every words. Thank you. We now have our intercession by Stephanie Harrison. Good morning, church. Please join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for being our refuge and our strength. Thank you for your tender mercies and for the compassion and love that you pour out on us every day. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, whose sacrifice and resurrection has brought us to life and reconciled us to you. Thank you that we may come before you as your beloved children. Thank you for turning your eyes and ears to us, Lord, and for being our Father and our example. Father, you are truly glorious in your majesty, and we lift your name up in praise. Let us be a light in this world as you fill us with your light, Father. Let us speak your word with love and boldness, and that your glory may be magnified by all we do in your name. Father, let us walk the path you have prepared for us with hope, peace, and joy that passes all understanding and remains in every circumstance. Let us love each other as you have bid us, with understanding, compassion, mercy, and selflessness, even as you have taught us by the examples that you have given us in your word. Fill us with your truth, Father, and let us learn to live in all the precious freedom that the blood of Christ has bought for us. Let us not have an empty form of godliness, Father, but let us be filled with the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may go out into the world armored with your armor that we may be a shining example of all that you are, Father, to every person we meet. For we know that those who have been forgiven much love much. And we recognize, Lord, that for each and every one of us, much has been forgiven. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayers. Father, we pray for those who are struggling right now, who do not know you. We pray that you would be with them in the fullness and power of your mercy and love that you would send your spirit of wisdom and of revelation to them and reveal yourself to them in the fullness of your amazing glory, Father, that they may come to know you, to trust you, and to rely on you in all things, because all that you promise is given to those who are your children, Father. For those who are struggling with illness, whether a mental illness, a physical illness, or a spiritual illness, Father, we ask that you bring them healing. Pour out your healing power, Father, and bring them to a new place in life filled with health and wellness. Set them free from the bondage of ill health, that they may come to know the joy and health that is in you. You have promised that you are our healer, Father, and we believe that it is your will to heal, so we ask you to do so. For those watching and praying with us, Father, who are hurting, we ask that you heal bodies, minds, and spirits, that you fret, set free those in bondage, and that you provide comfort and healing for those who are hurting. We pray for those who are isolated and lonely, Father, and we ask that you make your presence known to them and that you fill them with yourself, that they may sense the awesome power of your presence and feel that peace that only you can bring. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayers. Father, we also pray for our leaders. You have raised them up to authority and we recognize that you have put them there. We ask that you give them wisdom, Father, and revelation that can only come from you. We ask that you give them the tools they need to protect, to promote peace, to promote confidence in you, Father, as our greatest hope in all things. We know, Father, that they are seeking to do their best, but that the situation right now all around the world is difficult on so many levels. They need your wisdom and guidance, Father. So we pray for peace and harmony within the government and within the Queen's family, Father. We pray that they would work together, that they would heal damaged relationships with each other, and that through you, they would resolve to do good in your name. We ask that you raise up leaders, Father, who trust you, who are bold for you, and who will continue to lead as you would have them lead. We ask that you would turn those who are not for you, Father, or that you would remove them from authority, for we know that all authority that man carries is given by you. We ask that you would give them a generosity of spirit, Father, that goes beyond themselves, 
and that you would help them to guide and lead this nation as you would have us go. Bless and protect them, Father, as they bless and protect your children, that all might prosper as fellow human beings as we seek to love you with all we are and to love our neighbor as you have, neighbors as you have called us to. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayers. Father, we also say a special prayer for your church, for Emmanuel Church Forest Gate, and for all those who are part of its congregation, Father. We ask that you lift each and every one of us up and wrap us in your love and comfort and protection. We ask that you provide for us individually and as a congregation, Father. We ask that you fill us with your Holy Spirit beyond measure and make us confident in your love and in our knowledge of you. Father, we know that these times have been difficult and wearing for everyone, but we also know that you have promised to be there with us. You are the great I am, Father. You are in every cry, every prayer, every breath, and we know that nothing escapes your notice. We thank you that you see everything, Father, and that you hear everything. We thank you that you will take up all that we offer to yourself, Father, and that you will return it with abundance beyond what we can dream if we only trust you to do it, Father. So we ask you to help us with our unbelief. We ask you to strengthen our trust and assurance in you through Jesus Christ, and we ask you to work powerfully through each and every one of us, that we might live in harmony and peace as will be in your kingdom come, Father. We ask that you teach us, convict us, mold us, and lead us to be more and more like you every day. Teach us to renew our minds in your word and in your presence every single day, Father, and teach us to walk with you as we were always meant to. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done, for all that you are now doing that we cannot see, and for all that you have yet to reveal. Thank you that you have carried us through to this time and this place, to this moment, and that you will continue to carry us through every moment until after we come to rest with you. Remove any fear left in our hearts, Lord, and remind us that your words are true and trustworthy, and that our faith is not in anything of this world, and that our fear is not in anything of this world, Father, but our hope and our hearts rest in you and in the fullness of your glory. Wash us clean of that fear, Father, that we may live in perfect peace and joy, no matter what is presented to us. For we know the truth, Lord. We know that we have never had control over that moment of our passing, Lord. That has always been your sovereign design, Father. But we know that your promises will stand. And we know the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, that when we pass from this world, we will pass into your presence and live with you for eternity. We thank you for that promise, Father, and we rejoice in our present that you have gifted us with, hardships included, because we know that through such things we learn to trust you more and to lean on you more fully. We thank you, Lord, that you are always faithful. Help us to see you ever more clearly, to love you ever more dearly, and to walk with you ever more nearly. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Stephanie, for your prayers and your thoughts. Please stand for the peace. Brothers and sisters, we are the body of Christ. In one spirit, we are baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be, be with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace by waving to each other, or if you're at home worshiping with anyone, please pass the peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Please be seated. Please be seated. Comes to the time for our Eucharist.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus bless you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body given for you all. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup. He gave it and said, This is my body shed for you, for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and for all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing, Blessing and yes. honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please come forward for bread, to receive bread. We say the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now come to the time for our notices. And as usual, nothing much this week. Um, morning prayer continued, continues Monday to Fridays, 8.30 a.m. to 9.15 a.m. 
Please join us for morning prayer if you would like to join us if you have not yet done so. Please, and you would like the details, please contact myself or Reverend Obi or Reverend Chigo for the details. On Wednesdays, we have Bible study from 7.30 p.m. to about 8.45 p.m. And this week, this Wednesday, we'll be studying from, our Bible study will be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 8. So 1 Corinthians chapter 8 for our Bible study, Wednesday the 27th of January. Is there any other notices? Stephanie and John will sing our next hymn for us, which is hymn 33, Angels' Voices Ever Singing. But before we do so, please stand for the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Stephanie and John will sing for us. Please be seated. Thank you, Stephanie and John, once again. It's always a pleasure to have you two singing. And we thank Ifoma and Rini for technical support today. We thank Matthew for playing, and we thank Reverend Obi for giving us a wonderful sermon today. And we thank you at home for um, continuing to support us and to worship with us. We hope it is a blessing to you today. We pray it is a blessing to you today. And please continue to worship with us next week at the same time. And in, that, in the same word, we pray that you continue to keep safe and to look after others around you as well as yourselves. And please, if you get a call to go for the vaccine, 
then please take the vaccination and don't listen to the theories and the conspiracies. So, we conclude our service by saying, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.